Hello everyone, in this video, I'm going to show to you how to derive the mean for t-distribution. The probability density function or PDF for t-distribution is shown in here. So we can use this for our derivation of mean. The random variable for t-distribution is this t. The range of its values is from negative infinity to positive infinity. The parameter p in here is a constant. It refers to the number of degrees of freedom for this t-distribution. Its value should be an integer and should be at this one. Now for our derivation of mean, it is equal to the expectation of the random variable which is t. And then for expectation of t, it is equal to the integral of this t times the probability density function which is this. So let us copy this in here. Then dt. Then as mentioned, this random variable t has a range of values from negative infinity to positive infinity. So we have here negative infinity to positive infinity. Then we can move these constants outside of this integral. So we have here, let us copy this which is same with this. Then integral of what remains are this t. Then over this. 1 plus t squared over p raised to p plus 1 over 2. Then dt from negative infinity to positive infinity. Then to evaluate this integral expression in here, we know from calculus that for the integral of 1 over y raised to alpha dy, where this alpha is a constant, it is equal to, we can move this y raised to alpha to the numerator, so we can have here integral of y raised to negative alpha dy, then it is equal to y raised to negative alpha plus 1 over negative alpha plus 1. Then we have here plus c, which is the constant of integration. Now this formula for the integral of this is applicable only if this negative alpha plus 1 is not equal to 0. Otherwise, we will have here this over 0, which is infinity. So we can put here negative alpha plus 1 to be not equal to 0, or alpha is not equal to we can put this alpha to the right, so we have here not equal to 1. Now, if alpha is equal to 1, we can put here. When alpha is equal to 1, then we have here integral of 1 over y raised to alpha, where alpha is equal to 1. So, it is equal to integral of 1 over y dy, because alpha is just equal to 1, and then it is equal to ln of y plus c, where c is the constant of integration. Now for evaluating this, let this y to be this 1 plus t squared over p, and this alpha which is a constant is equal to this p plus 1 over 2. Then we can put here, let y to be equal to this and alpha to be this and then from here integral of 1 over for y raised to alpha it is this raised to this raised to p plus 1 over 2 And then for dy, 
it is the derivative of this. So let us put in here dy is equal to, since p is a constant, then it is 2t over p dt. Then for this dy, which is equal to this, then we can put here, let us remove this one. So we have here 2 over p. Then we have here t dt. t dt. Then from here, the value of this integral is this. So we can put here equal to y raised to negative alpha plus 1. So we have here this raised to negative alpha plus 1, which is negative of this plus 1. And then over. And then again, negative alpha plus 1, which is negative of this plus 1. Then we have here plus c. Now for this, we can distribute this negative n over 2 for each term in here. So we have here negative p over 2 minus 1 half and then plus 1. Then it is equal to negative p over 2 and then 1 minus 1 half is 1 half. So we have here plus one half. And then we have here a common denominator 2. So we have here negative p plus 1 over 2. And then we can move out this negative outside of this expression in here. So we have here negative p minus 1 and then over 2. So we can replace this and this by this negative p minus 1 over 2. Now, for this condition, alpha should be not equal to 1. So, this p plus 1 over 2 should not be equal to 1. So, we need to make this p plus 1 over 2 to be not equal to 1. Or, we can multiply this 2 by 1. So, we have here p plus 1 not equal to 2. And then, from here, p is not equal to 2 minus 1. So, we have here p is not equal to 2 minus 1 or 1. Now this p in here can have values from 1, 2, 3, etc. We should be integer. Since p cannot be equal to 1, then it should start from 2. So we can put here p is equal to 2, 3, 4, etc. Then from here, it is equal to for this constant, it is equal to this, since it is at the denominator, so we need to put here the reciprocal of this, which is negative 2 over p minus 1. And then for this, we can put this at the denominator by negating its exponent, which is this. So we have here 1 over 1 plus t squared over p raised to the negation of this, which is p minus 1 over 2. Then if we put the limits in here, we can remove this constant of integration. So let me copy this. And let us put the limits in here from negative infinity to positive infinity then this should be evaluated from negative infinity to positive infinity. Then, if we substitute this positive infinity for t in here, then this t squared will become positive infinity. Then over this constant, which is always greater than 0, is still positive infinity. Then plus 1 is still positive infinity. Then raised to this constant, this constant p minus 1 over 2 is also always greater than 0. Then this denominator in here will become positive infinity. Then 1 over positive infinity is equal to 0. So we have here 0 when we substitute this positive infinity for this t in here.
then minus. If we substitute this negative infinity for t in here, negative infinity squared is plus infinity. Then again, over this constant, which is always greater than zero, is still positive infinity. Then positive infinity plus one is positive infinity. Then raised to this constant, which is always greater than zero, is positive infinity. Then one over positive infinity is zero. So we have here zero. Then we have here zero minus zero is zero. Please take note that this p cannot be equal to one. So this two over p minus one is a finite number, so it is okay to have zero in here. Now comparing this to our integral expression in here, they are almost the same, except that we have two over p in here. So we need to put two over p in here, but we need to multiply it again by p over two to not to change its value. We can put this p over 2 outside of this integral. Then what remains in here is same with this, which is equal to 0 when p is not equal to 1 or this p plus 1 over 2 is not equal to 1. So we can put here it is equal to this times zero is zero when p is not equal to one. Now, when alpha is equal to one, we should have this ln of y. So we can have here when alpha is equal to one or p plus one over two is equal to one. Or from here, p plus 1 is equal to 2, then p is equal to 1. Then the value of this, let us copy this, is equal to ln of y, where this y is 1 plus t squared over p. Then we can remove this concept of integration because we are having here a definite integral. So we need to evaluate this from negative infinity to positive infinity. Then if we substitute this positive infinity for t in here, we have here positive infinity squared which is positive infinity. Then over p which is equal to 1 is still positive infinity. Then plus 1 is positive infinity. So we have here ln of positive infinity. Then minus, if we substitute this negative infinity for t in here, we have here negative infinity squared is positive infinity. Then over this one, is still positive infinity. Then plus one is positive infinity. So we have here again ln of positive infinity. Now what is the ln of positive infinity? We know that if we let x to be equal to ln of y, then we have here e raised to x is equal to y. Now to make this y to be positive infinity, the only way we have is to make this x to be also positive infinity. So we have here positive infinity, then minus positive infinity. Then positive infinity minus positive infinity is undefined. It is not equal to zero. So it means that we don't have a value for this one when p is equal to 1. So in here, when p is equal to 1, it is undefined. So the symbol for undefined is this. Just to make clear, it is undefined. So it means that our mean is equal to 0 when p is not equal to 1 or when p is at least 2. And we don't have a mean when p is equal to 1. So in summary, mean is equal to 0 when p is greater than or equal to 2. Otherwise, we don't have a mean.
So we have now derived or rather determined the mean for the distribution and this ends this video. I hope you learned a lot from this video and to the next video as well. So thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe in my channel.